So welcome, welcome our remarkable colleague, Joanne. We so appreciate your consistent leadership. And as always at Setsi, we begin all things by giving thanks and acknowledging our creator, acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge and give thanks to all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We give thanks to all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Joanne, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? Sure, thank you, Victor. Lovely to be here with you. Um, my name's Joanne Norris. I'm based in Coast Salish territory um, on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, um, the, Co the Squamish and the Suela Tooth peoples. And um, I, yeah, I was just reflecting on what to say here. So basically my background is, um, I would say it started in community economic development, local economic development, supporting entrepreneurs in Toronto and then expanding to develop programming internationally um, to help um, people launch businesses. And then I got, I really cut my teeth in the social finance space when I was uh, hired by Bill Young at Social Capital Partners back in 2001 when he was just getting it launched. And I spent nine wonderful years working with him and a, our small team to to do finance and investing differently. Um, really learned about social enterprise, social purpose business models during that period, as well as how to understand and measure value created from these different types of business models. And uh, yeah, and from there, you know, my career has spanned just a variety of entrepreneur support, connecting them to connecting, I would say, more barriered or unrepresented entrepreneurs to the resources they need to be successful in business. Um, as you may be aware, sometimes it's much harder for certain people where depending on where they live if they live in a really remote area depending on what languages they speak um, to access you know the broad Canadian resources that are meant for everybody but often only reach uh you know particular demographics that's incredible your background is remarkable and extensive and Bill Young is one of my favorite colleagues and favorite people <laughs> uh, so so hearing that um is also Incredible. I give thanks for your leadership and your candor. So my next question, what inspires you right now in your work? What has you curious or what's keeping you up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I am really um, inspired by the movement of capital and markets and how to make capital and market economies work for more people and more enterprises and more founders have like one of the things, you know, early days at social capital partners, it was like, you know, Bill had would say things like, you know, there's so many unique and customized financial instruments in, in the private sector, hundreds, maybe even, I don't know about thousands, but definitely, you know, hundreds specialized for industry, specialized, you know, tax credits for this. And what is there for the nonprofit sector? The grant, that's one instrument, um, you know, this is back in early 2000s. So now with the social finance, you know, federal support and, and impact investing getting more established, I would still call it pretty niche, but it's, it's getting bigger. Um, more people are getting interested. That's what keeps me, that's what is, I find inspiring. It's just anything to do with, uh, capital and markets that we can do differently because it's people who establish those markets and create those instruments. Um, and people are doing that. It's not like it's not being done. It is being done. There's lots of cool stuff out there. Um, and more now for sure than when I was starting out, you know, in the, in my career uh, in the nineties. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for your leadership 
and your tenacity. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm an 80s baby, so I, I grew up in the 90s. And yeah, <laughs> the, the, the work then, I can only imagine how daunting it was. I was, in a, I was a young person and I was navigating the 90s. So I can only imagine. Well, I think what's cool and what really inspires me to your question too, to be more specific, is um, strategic... Uh, not necessarily in the box collaborations um, across sectors and even within sectors. Um, that's where I think the real magic happens. Um, and so I always look for those kind of opportunities in the work I do. I look for connecting with people who have the, have the same like hopes and dreams and, and mission or vision as me, but might not have the same starting point. But that's okay. They, you know, that's good. I think there's lots of room for that. And I think there's more of an appetite for uh, innovative collaborations than there was definitely, uh, you know, a decade or two ago. Absolutely. I think because the challenges are becoming more perversive and intractable. It's, 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 I think the challenges are forcing people to almost figure out a way to collaborate in innovative ways. Yes, totally. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so so are you. <laughs> so my next <laughs> question, what challenges and barriers do you face in your work? And how are you and your colleagues working to overcome these challenges? Well, I would say, so at the end of 21, 2021, um, I had spent, prior to the end of 21, I spent the last five years in a staff role at an organization called Futurepreneur Canada, which was was wonderful, wonderful organization. Um, do a lot of good work to support young entrepreneurs in Canada um, that are launching, so, so pre-launch. Anyway, there I, um, my last five years, I was able to work in Northern BC and really learned a lot about the, the struggles for rural remote communities and founders up there. And then was able to expand and, and develop, uh, initiate uh, an Indigenous um, young entrepreneur program on behalf of Futurepreneur and got that going before I left. And now I'm an independent consultant. So it so it's a different way of working. Um, it's taken me a while to adjust, but I love it. So, uh, and I'm doing some great work with some great organizations. Criterion Institute is, is one of them. And uh, I guess my challenge is like, you know, I'm always kind of got to be thinking in a bit of a biz dev way, which, you know, I'm comfortable with. I've, I've been, you know, I've led business development teams, um, but, you know, just adjust. so that's a bit of a challenge. And um, I wouldn't say it's a challenge, but well, it is kind of a challenge. Just, you know, um, making new connections with people who, you know, would be great to work with in the future, like just being more um uh, present about about my building my network with folks and in that are doing work that resonates with me um and and I'd also love to to do more uh, international work get back into that absolutely and we're excited about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so my next question um how do you feel about the future of impact measurement social return on investments just in, social impact in general um, are you optimistic, mm -hmm. pessimistic? Are you hopeful? Mm. Oh my goodness. Um, super optimistic. I mean, uh, definitely want to give a shout out to Social Value Canada, which, you know, I was a founding board member of and Stephanie Robinson for all the hard work she's been doing with, with, with that organization and others. Um, you know, Kate Ruff and the Common Approach, I mean, and Garth Yule, who uh, is also working with her and demonstrating value, Resource Society, I was, you know, like, th there's wonderful tools and people in that space, Karim Harji, who I worked with at Social Capital Partners, um, and I'm super optimistic because what I'm seeing is more interest and more products um, for dashboard type tools, um, tools using AI, tools to make it easier for nonprofits to 
set up a system. I mean, you and I could talk for ages about, you know, how hard it is. There's, you know, the patchwork of funding, if there is even funding, like there's, you know, and I know what you, what we talked about before we got on this interview is the work, like the digital, I, uh, I can't remember the name, but what you're doing and the group, you know, I think is so important, you know, digital infrastructure, uh, capacity building um, opportunities for, for the nonprofit sector. It's, it's instrumental uh, for the future, but I'm optimistic. I'm not pessimistic. Yeah. So are kind of you, are you optimistic? I'm, I'm all, I have four children. My wife and I have four children, so I don't have a choice. I have to be an <laughs> optimist because I need a world where my children can exist and, and thrive and flourish, you know? So, so mm -hmm. I, I'm a force optimist based off of um, the, 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 the fruits of my loins and, and my wife's womb. Um, but <laughs> just name, you just named some of my favorite people. I, I work closely with Stephanie. I just met with her on Monday. Um, her I, I, social value candidate doing some remarkable work. My brother, my mm -hmm. Keith. And then Kate Ruff and Garth at Common Approach. I just, I just met with Kate, with Kate yesterday morning. And Common well, Approach that's funny. incredible work in terms of impact measurement and high yeah. quality segregated demographic data. So yeah, so um, I think we're in good company, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, definitely. so my next question, and it's my second last question. What okay. is your ultimate goal and what does success look like to you R right now? It's you and your colleagues. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, success is pretty clear. Like, I just want to to do to do the work that you know i think i have skills for and and that i think needs to be done with people that are pushing the same ball forward you know um yeah and i and i and yeah that's really it for me no big grandiose like <laughs> I love that. Sometimes simple is brilliant. <laughs> and yeah, it's, I think the, the, it's, I think we both have similar privileges in terms of being able to do heart work and passion work and work with people that have shared values. Um, mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's the most important thing. Like there's so many folks that I know that don't get to work on things that are passionate to them and align with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just to the work itself, what sticks like, using that question more as a like like what does your you know if you want if you're setting your impact metrics right for the future for me what what success is is you know that um that finance as a system and investing as a practice is not so um obfuscated and not so elitist and not so unaccessible uh, to people. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Myself and uh, my colleague, Carla Leone, and my brother, Adiola, we've been working for a while on the development of a social acquisition fund, um, primarily because of what you just said, like finance as a system and investing as a practice is elitist. And a lot of charities don't know they can be their accredited investors, um, that they can mm -hmm. do equity investments. And the concept mm -hmm. of social acquisitions is so foreign um, so I, I couldn't agree more like finance as a system of investing as a practice needs to become more accessible. And I think that is not only a beautiful sentiment, but it's should be more than a sentiment. It, it should be more than a practice, it should be a community of practice, um, thought leaders mm -hmm. working on making these things happen. And, I, and I'm seeing it slowly but surely. There's so many mm -hmm. colleagues that are doing this work um, in terms of making these systems more accessible, more just, more um, equitable. Um, more de decolonized, more diverse. So, so yeah, I give thanks for your leadership and candor as always. Oh, and one on that note, just a shout out to uh, Criterion because Criterion Institute is putting on Convergence, which is a an amazing learning, um, connecting experience in May in March. I think it's like March 18th. It's like over a period of 10 or 12 days. I don't have it in front of me. Anyway, Convergence. Um, definitely want to um, let people know about that. It's all online. So it's accessible that way. Um, and it's a really wonderful 
space to meet and connect with people who want to break, you know, who are in the practice of making finance uh, more more equitable and breaking down the power dynamics. So, yeah, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. So, my last question: Do you have any calls to actions or um, closing thoughts for our listeners and our viewers? Calls to action for people or for myself? What or in general? Like, what do you think? Or I, I say we go with <laughs> the flow. What do, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, calls to action. I well, I think I don't know. I think um, what I strive for uh, is just to always be, always be, you know, to always be earnest, always be honest, and and you know, be yourself. Um, I can't think of a. <laughs> call to action for the sector right now <laughs> um, I, love it. I love it being earnest yeah. being honest and i appreciate your candor your transparency your authenticity and all that you've brought so many ecosystems over the years and being a remarkable colleague and it was great seeing you yesterday and it was great seeing yeah. you today <laughs> yeah and yeah i just, I just give thanks for all that you do for so many Oh, well, thank you, Victor. And right back at you. I uh, I love that you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, well, I'm sure we can find another time to to connect on all the stuff that we're involved in. Indeed. And as always at Setsi, we close the way we began by giving thanks to our creator, by giving thanks to the original stewards of the various lands we're on, acknowledging and giving thanks to all our ancestors, all those who toil without compassion or compensation, we give thanks to all our elders and community stalwarts who show we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Joanne. I so appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too.